Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. And by the way, friends, this broadcast, not just the title you see on your screen, Saudis claim the U.S. brought down the Twin Towers. Now, we actually tried to air this broadcast yesterday on, uh, or excuse me, uh, two days ago on live stream, Israeli News Live on live stream there. For some reason, this video has been blocked. They did not want you knowing what was going on. Now, I have seen since we brought the article out, broke the news on this, not the first ones to break it. We were actually breaking this from an Arabic news source. Uh, there has been other news sources that have broke this as well. So I believe this time on uh, YouTube Israeli News Live, we should be su successful in keeping this particular video up. Uh, on uh, those of you that are watching via live stream right now on Israeli News Live, uh, you are actually able to see what's going on here in real time. Your title of your video is uh, the United States planning to make the first strike on Russia. And that's actually expected this summer, guys. Now, it's a very serious broadcast. I'm not sure how we're going to name this on um, YouTube tonight. Some things I need to share with you, though, before we get started in the broadcast. Uh, I am, you're going to be going from one bit of information about the Twin Towers into uh, what is the likely scenario this summer of a very real possibility of a nuclear war beginning uh, with possibly the United States striking first on Russia. Uh, that is from credible news source. Uh, but not in the United States, not in Europe either. I have actually uh, taken a lot of painstaking uh, time to put together this broadcast, gone through tremendous amount of research in Russian news and found the Russian news that is supporting this, that they are anticipating a, an attack of some sort this summer by the United States. So we're going to go in that momentarily. Now, let me share something with you as well. We are being attacked on our particular ministry, our website, in many different areas. We have been attacked financially. We have been attacked uh, by shutting down and, and bringing out that our channel is a threat. Even Norton Virus has uh, labeled both of our uh, channels, both IsraelReturns.com and IsraeliNewsLive.org as threats. Uh, they are listed as threats if you're using the Norton antivirus software. We are going to protest this because all we are doing is bringing out uh, uh, unbiased news reporting as we are seeing it. Uh, we do include biblical insights where we feel that it is necessary. We do expose the Vatican uh, and their plot that they have in the New World Order scheme of things, etc. But uh, for some reason, there are, we have definitely touched some nerves there, uh, and they are fighting back in their own ways. They are trying to hit us financially. They are trying to, when I say financially, even YouTube, for example, they are blocking almost every ad that we put out. I guess if I put out that we love Yeshua as our own Savior, they would even block that one. Uh, we have begun to protest even that because that is one way to help subsidize the income in this voluntary ministry that we do. It is a ministry that we're doing from our hearts to get out the message that we feel that God has laid upon our heart to share with the world, to share with people all over the world. And there, and there are viewers like yourselves that actually love us enough to help contribute financially to this ministry as well via our websites, IsraeliNewsLive.org and IsraelReturns.com. But I'm even getting reports from you guys that you're not even able to log in. Your service provider, maybe you have internet through your television or whatever, cable company, phone company, they're putting blocks on our websites as well. So it's kind of in a way, this is similar to that of the mark of the beast. If you can't, you can't buy or sell, saving you take the mark. Well, in this case, if I don't agree with their theology and preach their little uh, petty doctrine of, you know, Pope says is right doctrine, then they're going to make sure that you can't buy or sell by cutting off your financial 
uh, means. And so I see it as a direct attack. You know, and we do need the support of the people to make this happen. This is what we've dedicated our lives to doing. And so we thank you for those of you that are able to get through and that persevere to help this ministry continue on because the broadcast you're about to hear tonight is the type of things that we try to bring out to the people. We do not believe in fear-mongering. We do not believe in just saying things to say it. We really try to bring out things in a, with an objective opinion and to bring you news as well as biblical insights that we feel that God has laid on our heart to warn the people about. The broadcast, even for this here on YouTube, perhaps should not be Saudis claim the U.S. brought down the Twin Towers. Maybe I should retitle it before I actually air it there as the United States intends to strike Russia, possibly with a nuclear strike this summer. That may sound far-fetched, and I do know that there have been some questionable websites that have actually stated this as well, but most people would never trust those sources to begin with. But we did our homework, and it is expected by Russia. I think after you see some of the news tonight, including the things about Saudi Arabia, and their claim the U.S. took down the Twin Towers, it might make it more clear why the U.S. intends to do what they have been accused of plotting and planning against the Soviet Union. Let's get into this message right away, friends. The first part we are going to look at is that Saudi Arabia is accusing the United States of direct involvement of the Twin Towers, which is a very strong accusation there has been many, quote-unquote, conspiracy theories out there that the U.S. actually planned and carried out the 9-11 attacks. Many people get upset when you say that because many people knew and had loved ones that died in the 9-11 attacks. I actually knew a personal friend that worked there that, by the grace of God, got caught in a subway and could not get to work. The subway had some kind of delay or something and they were not able to make it into work that day and they were a survivor as a result. So probably many of us that are watching tonight have a personal connection there. And so when, when there are those that have brought out the conspiracy theories that the U.S. actually took down the World Trade Center themselves or the Israelis were involved or the Saudis were involved, etc., whatever the case may be, that really strikes hard for most Americans, especially those that had uh, veterans, soldiers that were in the war against this particular, against uh, uh, Iraq, and uh, those that fought in the Iraq war and lost their lives or suffered through tragedy of the war itself. So it's a very personal, very deep and personal uh, thing for this to happen. I have a stepbrother. Uh, Owen, Owen also, maybe he's watching the broadcast tonight. I know he, he likes Israeli News Live, but Owen himself also was there and fought in Iraq. He fought in Fallujah. He, it was his uh, team that actually captured Saddam Hussein. Uh, he was actually home on break during the time of the capture, but it was his own uh, battalion that captured Saddam Hussein. So, you know, my stepbrother, it's very personal for him as well. What went on there it was very difficult, very hard uh, in what he suffered as well. But the truth of the matter is, we have to consider not only from the conspiracy theorists ideas about this, now there's credible sources that are claiming that the U.S. was involved in taking down the Twin Towers themselves. Now, it was obvious, we reported here on Israeli News Live, that we expected the Saudis would come out and begin to release the information they had after the Senate had approved the bill for the U.S. citizens to be able to sue Saudi Arabia over 9-11 because all the terror, or the terrorists, quote-unquote terrorists that were on board these planes uh, came from Saudi Arabia uh, for the most part. And so therefore, they have allowed Saudi Arabia to be financially sued over this matter. And why would they do that? Because not every senator by no means knows or has privy the information that, they, that this could indeed have been an inside job, or at least a possibility. So 
although I have my own personal opinions about this, I do want to approach this in an objective manner here tonight, that there is a possibility that it could have been an inside job. Uh, there were Israelis that had an office inside the Twin Towers. Uh, there were Israelis that were stopped and questioned by the federal government authorities because they were watching the events as it transpired from a distance. All kinds of things happened here uh, that seemed to implicate a lot of different people. And of course, the conspiracy theory videos that go on out there, they clearly show you uh, footage from the videos that are seen there that it looks like that there was actually other detonations going off in the building. Uh, there's also uh, suggestions that it was not an airplane that hit uh, the Pentagon, but rather a missile that struck the Pentagon instead from certain eyewitnesses. A lot of people that did come out and begin to talk about it ended up being silenced. Some people ended up dying. All kinds of things that have happened that have raised a lot of awareness. But it's articles like this one here on BrettBart.com on May 23rd of 2016 that we were trying to bring to you as this news began to break immediately. And I forget who sent me this. Someone was kind enough to send this to me and I caught it in an email and immediately went, we went to the air to bring this out to you. And here's what was stated in the article. Tel Aviv, the Saudi press is still furious over the U.S., Senators unanimous vote a, approving a bill that allows the families of 9-11 victims to sue Saudi Arabia. This time, the London-based Al Hayat Daily has claimed that the U.S. planned the attacks on the World Trade Center in order to create a global war on terror. Now, this is from Al Hayat. That would be, Al Hayat, by the way, is considered to be a legitimate news source. All right. Now, it went on to say in the article, uh, it was written by Saudi's legal expert, Khatib al-Shamari. Uh, no, that's not him. That's uh, one of the princes of Saudi Arabia in the photo that I put up here. Uh, it was translated by Memory. Memory is a, uh, is a Middle East uh, uh, online video uh, news uh, agency that brings out a lot of things that are against Israel, etc., things like that. Anyway, claims that American threats to expose documents that prove Saudi involvement in the attacks are part of a long-standing U.S. policy that he calls victories by means of uh, archives. Now, that's not all it says. I put a little bit more of the article because of the, extent, uh, because of the accusatory statements in here. Also, again, Saudi press, uh, U.S. blew up World Trade Center, to create War on Terror, BrettBart.com, uh, May 23rd of 2016. And again, they're quoting from the Hayat uh, uh, news source from London, England. It said, September 11th is one of winning cards in the American archives because all the wise people in the world who are experts on American policy and who, who analyze the images and the videos of 9-11 agree unanimously that what happened in the Twin Towers was purely American action planned and carried out within the U.S. The proof of this is a sequence of continuous explosions that dramatically ripped through both buildings. Expert structural engineers demolished them with explosives while the planes crashing only gave the green light for the de uh, detonation. They were not the reason for the collapse, but the U.S. still spreads blame in all directions. Now, this is what was written by Hayat. This was, writ was written by uh, al-Shamari, Khatib al-Shamari, the expert uh, for the Saudi's legal uh, government there, wrote this article. Now, they are going by the actual video footage, just like the conspiracy theories have done all along. So they're not using, in this case here, the Saudis are not using any other evidence than what, than what you and I have been able to see as well. We have seen the footage. I have seen this as well. Uh, as they zoom in and they show the explosions that are happening. Now I'm sure in, in all likelihood, though, there are many others that are saying uh, that this is, uh, could have been done by gas explosions, etc. in the building. Who knows? And by the way, RT News is just now reporting 21 people are uh, trapped inside a hidden river cave in Kentucky. Uh, this is being reported. Breaking news is happening right now. Uh, this is one, one of the ways we keep up with things like that. 
uh, things that are going on. Anyway, continuing on though with the report here. So as we see here, that's their source there. But one of the things that came to my mind when all this was going on is something that Vladimir Putin said not too long ago, uh, back last year. Now let's take a look at that. Uh, Pravada, uh, which is a Russian news source, Pravada.ru, Putin threatens to release satellite evidence of 9-11. This was, uh, came out on February 10th of 2015. Uh, it was published on Veterans Today. It's the one that actually published this story here that I took my source from. Uh, Pravda is, uh, is a, uh, it's in the Russian language, so you have to translate it. They do have an English version as well if you want to look it up on their website. Uh, it's stated here, Putin is going to hit once, but he's going to hit hard. Russia is preparing the release of evidence of the involvement of the U.S. government and intelligence services in September 11th attacks. The list of evidence includes satellite images. Published material can prove the U.S. government complicity in 9-11 attacks and the successful manipulation of public opinion. The attack was planned by the U.S. government, but exercised using her proxy so that an attack on America and the people of the United States looked like an act of an aggression by an international terrorist organization. This is what Putin brought out. And Putin said that he would take and expose it to the world what the United States has done. Now, he's got the technology to know it. Because they do watch everything in the United States. They're always spying on the U.S. just like the U.S. is always spying on Russia. All right? Now, it doesn't end there. Let's look a little bit more of what he says here. Putin, Russian inside, uh, pushing, Putin Russia is ready to show the proof of 9-11 was an inside job. This was on your newswire on January 15th of 2016. That's this year. Now, remember, the other one came out last year in February of 2015. So here we are. Nearly a year later, now your news wire is bringing out a bombshell. Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin has named the date he plans to release proof that the U.S. government and intelligence agencies were responsible for the controlled demolition of the World Trade Center and the 9-11 attacks. According to the Kremlin insiders, President Putin has named September 11th, 2016 as the date he plans to release the satellite footage proving conclusively that the U.S. government's darkest secret that the 9-11 tax were a false flag terrorist event committed against their own citizens. That is a major bombshell. Can you imagine what that will do for the United States if Vladimir Putin goes ahead with his plan in September, on September the 11th, and releases this information. That would cause, more than likely, that may cause anarchy in the United States. I can only imagine the way the people would react. Now, of course, the United States has got to have some kind of plan to thwart it, which it kind of makes me realize why my video was blocked on live stream. I've never seen them be able to block live stream before, but they blocked live stream. They disabled everything on it. So the U.S. has got to prepare for a counter on this. They can't allow President Putin to come out with this. Do you realize how damning that will be for the U.S. government if Putin releases this information? This is extremely serious, friends. It also says in the same article, the U.S. government's secret terrorist activities at home and internationally will be exposed, undermining the credibility of the nation on the world stage and proving that Putin is the only major world leader truly fighting terrorism and darker forces. You know, if he proves that, it's true. That's exactly what it would do. That would destroy the United States' credibility. It would also undermine the U.S.'s national security. So for the United States, this is a national security threat for Vladimir Putin to carry that out. 
And so there's been talk already that Russia or the United States is planning a preemptive nuclear strike on Russia. Some sources that I've read state that it will happen as early as this summer. Some say in August. Yeah, actually naming a month. Is this true or not? I can't tell you. I don't know. But I will tell you what is serious. And that was from this article. Uh, I don't, let me see real quick. Hang on one second, friends. Um, no, it's not from this article here. I got another article I'm going to share with you. Let me first go to this one too. First this article, then we'll be getting to the other one in just a moment. U.S. is planning nuclear first strike attack on Russia or China. This was reported by PressTV.com on April the 10th of 2016. An American anti-war activist and journalist says that the Thod missile deployment in South Korea proposed by the United States as part of a U.S. plan to launch a nuclear first strike attack on Russia or China. Bruce Gan G uh, Gagnon, the coordinator of the Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space, made the remarks in an interview with Press TV on Saturday after U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter said the United States will go ahead with the deployment of the term, uh, terminal high-altitude area defense called THAAD system in South Korea despite Chinese complaints. The article goes on to state that missile defense really is a key element in U.S. first strike attacking plan, Gagnon said. The idea is that when you launch at a first strike attack on Russia or China, then they try to fire their remaining retaliatory strike after the U.S. hit their nuclear systems, and it is then when the so-called missile defense system would be used to pick up the uh, retaliatory strike. So after the U.S. first strike lunges into the heart of China or Russia, the so-called missile defense shield would then be used to pick up these retaliatory strikes, he reiterated. In fact, at the U.S. Space Command, the United States annual war games, this very thing, they practice a first strike at China or Russia, and they use missile defense as a way to pick up their retaliatory strikes, the anti-war activists noted. Okay, now that's just the U.S. speaking of this, right? This has nothing to do with the fact that the United States has been building up military presence in Eastern Europe, uh, defense shields all across Europe, uh, Romania, Latvia, Poland, and now even South Korea. One, one uh, particular analyst made the comment that, that the United States is using North Korea as the reason for it, but they said really North Korea is not the problem. They said they're worried about China and also enclosing Russia on its own borders. Now I believe that the United States is, is, is putting China in the mix here because there's a couple of reasons behind that. One, China and Russia are working on a space war program together. That's another thing I found in Russian news. The Russians are very concerned about what they're doing. And by the way, Many times, and I have to say this very objectively, friends, I'm not like the journalists out there on Fox News or CNN that is going to go out there and, and tell you a, a bunch of garbage just to make you feel better because we're Americans and we should be the, the, the superiority country around the world that's spreading our Christian beliefs. Our country is not spreading our Christian beliefs. Believe me, one thing the United States is not doing is they don't give a flippity dip about the, the believers in Yeshua, those believers of Jesus in America, they could care less about what your doctrines are, and that should be very evident by the policies that the administration passes on a regular basis. Everything is anti-Christian. In fact, even the evangelicals are considered terrorists in their own mind. All right, so they don't care nothing about Christian values or believers in Yeshua, or your values. And I have to say this because, unfortunately, a lot of times, my own brothers and sisters, they hate one another because of the terminology you use. That needs to come to an end. We're fighting against Satan, not against each other.
And we got to realize that. Now, that being said, I know for a fact, my family knows this for a fact, being in East Europe, we saw long before Vladimir Putin ever stated that he was going to build 40 new intercontinental ballistic missiles, Barack Obama had already sent in the heavy tanks, the heavy uh, artillery and everything into Eastern Europe. And then he did it secretly, but we saw the transporting of the equipment going to the east. RT News even picked it up that they were sending tanks into Latvia and published the photos of it. We had photos ourselves. We saw these things going on. But then when Russia, when Putin was forced to do a countermeasure, he said, I'm going to build 40 more intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles in response to the U.S. buildup in Eastern Europe. Then Barack Obama goes on national television and tells the American people, because Putin is building up intercontinental ballistic missiles and has become a threat to the United States, we will have to send in our forces with tanks and airplanes, warplanes over into Eastern Europe to protect our allies. That was a lie. I mean, that's a lie straight out of hell. It was propaganda to our own people to get us to believe that Russia was the true aggressor when it wasn't Russia. You know, listen, I'll stand behind America with all she's got for the freedom of religion. I would fight for our country and I would be willing to die for the freedom of faith, for the name of Jesus Christ and anything that comes against us. You know, if it were to be the Arabic nations attacking us for our freedom of religion, I'd stand and fight with you. But friends, we have been duped into propaganda. And I don't say that Russia doesn't use propaganda with their own people. I'm sure they do. But Putin never did anything intentionally. He, he only has responded to what has been happening to him. And he's trying to rid ISIS out of the Middle East. Does he, have a, a, does he have an agenda of his own? Sure he does. He's trying to protect his own national interests. In other words, the oil reserves. Yes, that's why he's there. That's why he's protected Bashar al-Assad. I know that. That's true. But he's never, it doubt, he never didn't, that's not, that's not been his issue either. He's told the people that. He's even said it about America. He said if Barack Obama would take into consider his own national interests instead of just trying to be uh, uh, you know, uh, an imperialistic nation, then we could, we could get along. He said, but our national interest is not taken into consideration while Obama is going through the Middle East and just conquering all the nations there. And he's right. So Putin actually has been trying to do the right thing. Doesn't mean in everything. I realize that. And I know that they're planning a war with journalists are going to uncover a bunch of stuff to try to make him look like a, a rich multi-billionaire and he's got all kinds of assets all over the world. It may be so. What president doesn't in the United States? Barack Obama, when he went in to be president of the United States, he didn't have a whole lot of money either. But now the man has got some multi-million dollar mansion built on some island out in who knows where. Power does come with its privilege, I realize that. So I'm not trying to put Mr. Putin on a pedestal, but I'm trying to tell you what's really going on. And now the United States, in order to save face, has got to launch a first strike on Russia. Now, granted, there is a threat for the U.S. as well, because why? Russia is preparing with China because they're concerned about what the U.S. has been doing. But that's the whole thing. That's, get rid of the propaganda. That's where the problem comes in at. It wasn't that Russia was the first aggressor, just like Putin said all along. He said, who's the one with all the bases all over the world? He said, we have two. At the time, before he started with Syria, he said, we have two bases globally besides our own forces in Russia. And he says, how many, how many hundreds does the U.S. have? Now he has more because he's built up bases in Syria, and now he is starting to spread out. And he is trying to build a partnership like the U.S. did with NATO. He's trying to build allies. Now, I don't support Vladimir Putin when it comes to this siding with Iran either, who's against Israel and wants to annihilate Israel off the face of the earth. And I don't think it's the wisest move in the world for Putin to give Iran a bunch of S-300 missiles there so that they can protect themselves when they go to bomb Israel. 
I'm totally against these things. But I have to think about what he is doing and why he did it too. That's his southern border. He's got the United States and Afghanistan and, and, uh, and, and, and Pakistan. The, the U.S. has military bases in Iraq and Kuwait and the United Kingdom and Saudi Arabia and everywhere else. He knows that if the U.S. were to try to hit his southern border, they got to go through places like uh, Armenia, they got to go through uh, Iran, etc., to get to him. So he wants to at least slow him down. That's his intention there. All right. But let's get into the heart of the matter of what's really going on. Now, I've shared with you here, as you can see, the U.S. knows this is coming. Now, let's look at what Russian news has brought out. Now, I took the time to translate all of this for you already. I did use Google Translate, but my wife speaks uh, fluent Russian, so we don't have any problems with, it, with knowing what's being said on the news here uh, in, in, in our part of the world if we want to monitor the news. So I just get my wife to confirm things when I'm working on this. Not every time, but just to make the point clear. Now, this is on a website called www.3world-war.su. SU stands for Soviet Union. It was, uh, came out this year, 2016. The title of the article in English is U.S. Plans in Early Summer Start World War III or Disable SWIFT in Russia. The SWIFT system, the banking system. So you see, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is not a Russian garbage website reporting a bunch of hyped up news. This is Russia saying they know the U.S. has got a plan for one or the other. Either they're going to start World War III or they're going to disable Russia from the financial market completely. Let me read to you what they say. And I've already seen a lot of articles out there saying that war is going to start this summer. The U.S. is planning a war this summer. This article, though, from Russia is actually neutral. They believe it's going to be one or the other. It's either going to be a financial attack on Russia or it's going to be an outright war. The U.S. Federal Reserve encouraged all major Western companies completely shut down their, it should say, their operation in Russia before the summer of this year, 2016. This TSN.UA Ukrainian TV channel said political analyst Taras Barzovets citing insider information. That's where that came from. In other words, the Ukrainian television has already stated that the U.S. is planning on doing these things. All right. Now, the Ukrainians are very good about spilling their guts. I guess they all get drunk over there and they go tell all the plans that the U.S. has for Russia. Or maybe they're just gloating in the fact that they figure Russia is going to get their butt kicked by the United States. I don't think it's going to go down so easy, friends. We go to anger that bear, and we're going to have our hands full. And it may even cause Russia to strike first as well. We've got to keep that in mind. And that's innocent people on both sides. There's innocent Russians, there's innocent Americans. Both sides. And I love people. I love humanity. I especially love those believers of Yeshua. While it is only discussed, but then we must understand that if they made a decision, then of course they will hide it. Speaking about the possibility of doing a war or a financial attack. They just do everything at the last moment, said a political consultant. The U.S. Federal Reserve an independent federal agency that performs the functions of central banks and performs centralized control of the commercial banking system states. Political technologist Vladimir Mons, whoever it should be noted that these recommendations can still be associated with a possible impending armed provocation against Russia, which can lead to beginning of World War III, only the Fed does not take into account the factor that the Russian president gave clearly understanding that Western and overseas partners that Russia would firmly defend its interest by all available means. If you start World War III, it will certainly hook all and will have dire consequences for the EU's economy, for the U.S. economy. It may be that this conflict will be the last and the biggest fiasco in the history of the United States. Quote, 
unquote. Now that's translating it into English. He says, recall that in the last few days of the Russian began to leave the major automobile companies. Since, since March 18th, it became known about the exit from the Russian market, the Opel brand, most models of Chevrolet, the owner of the brands, the American company General Motors stopped uh, its building and productions in St. Petersburg plant for the production of cars of these brands. March 19th to suspend exports of machinery in Russia. Sad, the South Korean manufacturer Saesonging vehicles. They're stopping doing business in Russia. Friends, this is, this is going far beyond sanctions. This has nothing more to do with sanctions. When an American car manufacturer stops production, they know the U.S. is not planning on changing anything. And Russia has made it quite clear that they'll use nuclear force if they're pushed to it. Because you have to understand, trying to cripple them financially for Putin is an act of war. He's not going to allow his country just to crumble down to the ground. And they can withstand. My wife has told me, my wife grew up in communism. When Eastern Europe was under Soviet rule, she said, don't think these people can't deal with hardships. They can deal with hardships. Okay? This is another one, another Russian one here. The U.S. suspects Russia and China the outer, uh, to be an outer collusion. In other words, they're, they're working together against the United States. This article here was on uh, uh, REN TV, May 10th, 2016. It says, Americans suspect Russia and China in a secret space conspiracy. According to the U.S. Department of Defense, the countries are working together on technology that will help them to carry out an attack in space. This was announced today, writes the Washington Post. That's where they got their source from. The publication said that Russia and China are increasing the potential for an attack while the Pentagon is mired in Iraq and Afghanistan. So, this is another reason why that Russia is expecting something to happen this summer as well. Now, I kind of think myself, not just the fact that the U.S. is using this to justify their reasoning maybe for an attack, that Russia and China may be planning on disabling the U.S. or maybe using an MP, uh, EMP attack or something of that nature on the U.S., putting it back into the Stone Age. So everybody's worried about the EMP attack because these countries all have the ability to do it and knock the other country back into the Stone Age. And if that happens, it's going to turn into a mess. Whoever would do it would be the conqueror no matter what. So there is that threat on both sides that these things could happen as well. Now, given this, given the fact also that Putin has threatened to come out and expose the United States for the 9-11 attack, let me tell you something. That is a major national security threat for the U.S. for him to expose it, especially if he's got some good, solid, without any doubt, groundbreaking evidence that can blackmail the U.S. to no degree. If he's got that kind of information, you can believe, believe one thing. The elite of this country, the United States, will do everything it can to stop Russia. And they won't let that come out on September the 11th. You can count on that. Or are they kind of hoping that Putin is just bluffing? I don't know if the U.S. is going to sit back and just let that happen. Now, this came back out in 2014, but just to kind of give you a little bit of uh, idea here, in the Reaganomics creator, the U.S. has plans for a, a nuclear first strike on Russia and China. This came out on Truth and Action of 2014. Now, this is uh, Dr. Paul Roberts, uh, who uh, he's with, uh, states that the U.S. has already planned a nuclear first strike on Russia and China, which it believes can win because of our missile defense system. Uh, and, of course, that was said back in 2014. That's two years ago. A lot of things have changed with Russia since then. Uh, but he goes on and says, Washington only has war plans for launching a preemptive nuclear attack on Russia and also possibly China. But Washington has a cadre of people who advocate nuclear war. 
Uh, we have people running around Washington saying things such as, what's the good of a nuclear weapons if you can't use them? Uh, something uh, that, that Dr. Roberts has stated there. Why would the U.S. do this, Roberts states? Russia is a country that is large enough and has sufficient resources that it could rise to the position of being a barrier to Washington's exercise of hegemony over the world. So Russia has always been the target of this nuclear war doctrine. Which reminds me, if you look at this from a biblical perspective, and again, I'm not one for running around trying to make every biblical, every news scenario match a biblical prophecy, uh, but just one in particular that just stands out like a sore thumb, and that's in Daniel chapter 11, and this is where the, the king of the north is concerned about tidings out of the north and out of the east, all right? Now, let me see if I can just find that real quick here. Um, when you get down to Daniel 11, verse 28, Then shall he return into his own land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. You know, I really believe this is when the United States left Iraq and went back to their country. Now, you got to remember, the U.S., NATO, their allies, are fighting the wars for the Vatican. The king of the north, the king is actually the Pope of Rome. But it's the U.S. who is the daughter of Babylon. I did a message on this not too long ago. Mystery Babylon, daughter of Babylon, Babylon itself. Who are all these different Babylons? And the daughter of Babylon is the United States. It's the, it's the uh, Protestant churches. That's where the daughter of Babylon gets their name from because they're of the mother harlot out of Revelation that we see there, which is from Mystery Babylon. Anyway, she returns back to her own land. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Chetham shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do, and he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. By the way, the Holy Covenant, friends, so many people think that Daniel's 70th week, that there's a seven-year treaty signed, uh, and this is the covenant. Now, it's not to say that there's not a covenant that the Antichrist has with Israel, but the holy covenant. God doesn't call his covenants holy. Daniel would never call a covenant holy unless it really was holy. You see, what is the holy covenant? The holy covenant is that the two witnesses have come on the scene and they have restored back the holy law of God with Israel and she's now believing that Yeshua is her Messiah. That's the holy covenant, friends. So many people have missed this and misinterpreted this all together. And that's what the Holy Covenant is. Look, he's against this Holy Covenant. Do you think if it was a covenant that he signed himself with Israel that he would be against it? No, he wouldn't be against that. But that Holy Covenant, he's against because it's the restoration of the Word of God. So he comes back because he's got indignation for that Holy Covenant. An arm shall stand in his part and they shall... Uh, pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. See, the, the, remember he has, he has that insiders. In other words, there's going to be little spies inside of the great revival that will come by the two witnesses. There will be spies in there. Just like we dealing with, we're dealing with this ourselves, a bunch of spies trying to infiltrate the ministry to try to bring us down by bringing out, put a little bit of truth in there and then tell the rest lies so that people get all twisted up in their mind and begin to hate us like crazy. <clears throat> it says, and they understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity, and spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. See, that's what's happening with our own ministry. We got the same problem. In a little tiny, a little tiny sense of that, we're dealing with the same thing because we're trying to bring to the people the true word of God, but everybody's hung up out there on a bunch of little flatteries that these little backstabbing, lying, no good deceitful people try to come in there and discredit you. All right? 
Now, and by the way, the, I know they listen, they listen to every one of the broadcasts and they go make their little videos against us. So, by the way, when you listen, you need to know that you are those one with flattery. You're just what you're you're the miniature type of the one with flatteries. You're gonna be do you're doing us just like they'll do with the two witnesses in Israel. Same thing, just on a little smaller scale. All right. It says, and the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignant nation is accomplished for that is determined shall be done neither shall he regard the god of his fathers nor the desire of women or regard any god for he shall magnify himself above all of course he doesn't have a regard for women there's two ways that that that's actually a compound fulfillment one he, he doesn't believe in equality of women I believe in equality of women. Yeshua stood for equality of women, okay? And you can take all these words of Paul that everybody perverts out there when Paul speaks about, well, the man is the head of a woman and everything. Friend, let me tell you something. That word right there, kephale, happens to be source. In other words, uh, Eve come from Adam's side, okay? And that's why he goes on to say, neither is the man without the woman, for the man is from the woman. Sure. In other words, now through the birth of a woman, and he's actually speaking of the birth of Jesus in that case there. All right, but anyway, not to get sidetracked. But in his estate shall be honor the God of forces. Yeah, the Pope always claims to honor God as being the real God. And who, uh, in his father, but he'll honor a God whom his fathers knew not, Shall he honor with gold, silver, and with precious stones? Well, that's right. They got all their little statues in there. You know, you got to remember what Abraham did. Abraham burned down that house of idols, according to the book of Jubilees, chapter 12. Thus shall he do in the most strong holes with a strange God, whom shall he, shall he acknowledge and increase with, with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. That's speaking about Israel. He divides the land for gain. And the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, and with chariots, and with horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow and pass over. See, this is when he sends his NATO forces back down into the Middle East there. He shall enter also into the glorious land, that's Israel. See, see, also. He also enters into the glorious land. In other words, he justifies going down there because why? They got to hit Russia as part of this war because Russia's down in Syria. So he's going to come in there, justify it with a war in Syria, but he's also going to enter into the glorious land, into Israel, right? And, and be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Adam, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand uh, also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasuries of gold and silver. Sure, they always run all the gold. But, verse 44, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with a great fury to destroy and to utterly take away many. That's China and Russia. Now, that's just, that's just Daniel's quick version of this. Now, we know that Russia, yes, is in Syria there. Why would it say tidings out of the north? Because Russia still has a huge army up there north of him as well. So see, the king of the north in Daniel and the tidings out of the north are two different peoples altogether. And I, I really believe firmly that NATO with the Pope of Rome being the king of the north, is that one there. And I think the tidings out of the north and out of the east, out of the north and out of the east represent Russia and China. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benu. You've been watching Israeli News Live, both live stream, catching it live right now. Those of you who will be catching this on YouTube, I trust this has been a blessing. Do keep us in prayer. I know I've, I've asked more than I normally do about supporting this work. We do need your help, though, because the trip going to Israel there, we're still below uh, our, 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 our goal that we have in order to accomplish the work that we're going to do there. So we thank you and uh, for supporting this work we do, IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. And, of course, at the end of the video is our mailing address as well. Uh, if you do send by mail, it's better if you do a check uh, uh, or a check in U.S. funds so that we can do it online. If you do do a money order, we can, we can get that sent to our bank, uh, but it's just easier to do it electronically. Anyway, God bless you and thank you for watching. Shalom.